we are looking at the moment at the 10 features that make up the image of God in man. And we said these are not exhaustive. So we have looked through four of these features and today we are on number five. That is our free will capacity to make rational choices. Very, very closely related to what we've to our capacity to reason, our capacity to identify, analyze, evaluate, and then we can make this informed decision. We can take these rational choices. Now, there are some nature of God that are not communicable. We are talking about that which God has communicated to us that enables us to be able to relate to him and to be able to fulfill his purpose and his will. But what we're saying is that the God that is revealed to us on the pages of the Bible is a God that makes decision. Choices for divine relationship, choices for divine purpose, choices for divine assignment. The Bible is a book that reveals God's person, God's plan, and God's purpose. Psalm 135 verse 6, Whatsoever the Lord pleased, that he did in heaven. Whatsoever the Lord pleased, that did he in heaven and in earth and in the sea and in all the places. See, Eve, he says, he does as he chooses in heaven and on earth and in and deep in the sea. Listen to me. Our God is a God that chooses. He's a God that chooses. And where we read here is that God does as he chooses. In other words, God's action is predicated upon his choices. And the choices of God, the will of God, we talk about the sovereign will of God, will be fulfilled because God does as he chooses. And his will will be done in heaven. His will will be done on earth. And his will will be done under the earth. He does as he chooses. In other words, God's activity is not half facade. God planned his purpose and God does his purpose. God fulfilled his purpose and God has called us so that we can fulfill his divine purpose. He does as he chooses in heaven and on earth and deep in the heart. Let's read this a little bit further and we are now going to read Romans chapter 9 and we read two verses. Romans chapter 9 we read verse 11 and we read verse 15. And here he was talking about the story when God called Isaac and Rebekah. Okay, Rebekah was carrying a twin. The Bible says, For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election, according to his choices, might stand. Not of works, but of him that called it. God chooses and God called. Verse 15, For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. The God of the Bible, that is what we are establishing. The God of the Bible is a God that makes choices, and he makes choices according to his election. And we have been given an example here of the two children in the womb, and God is a God of choice. He decided that by election, and that this is his choice, and God goes ahead to fulfill his choice. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. The God of the Bible is a God that makes choices. Let's read Acts chapter 13, and then we are also going to read Acts chapter 22. Acts chapter 13, we read verses 14, verse 14, and then we read verse 17. And this is talking about Paul and his team. Verse 14, But when they departed from Paga, they came unto Antioch in Pisida, and they went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. And obviously, other events went on, and then they approached Paul and asked him if he had a word for the people. But one thing that Paul said by the Holy Spirit is what is going to engage our attention. Verse 17, he said, The God of these people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwell as strangers in the land of Egypt and with an eye ham brought them out of it. Now I'm going to make one or two comments but let's read Acts chapter 22 and let's read verses 12 to 14. And this was when, was, when Paul was recounting 
his experience when he was going to Damascus to, you know, to arrest the the Christian, and it was he himself was arrested, and God sent, and he became blind by the light, and God sent Ananias to go and open his eyes. This is Paul now recounting that incident, and one Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwell there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I look up unto him, verse 14 is important for us. And he said, The God of our fathers have chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will, and see that just one, and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. And this is important. Our God is a God of choice. You know, people always fight about the children of Israel and say, Why? why? Listen, the children of Israel, they are not any better than anybody but it is by the choice of god god chose abraham for this deliverer for the messiah to come it's not because the children of israel is not because the israelites are better than any other thing and god told them that clearly it's not because they are bigger it's not because they are better than anybody it is because of the choice of god god chose that line so that through them god can bring his purpose to come to pass and because of God's choice God called them God enter into a covenant with that nation okay and there's nothing anybody can do about that it is by the divine election and by the divine calling of God and obviously as a nation they have not fulfilled the purpose and the calling of God upon their life but they will do they will do because God has not called forgotten them and the teaching of 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 you know the church replacing israel replacement theology as it's been called that is not a biblical teaching now there's a blindness upon them as a nation there are people that are, they are messianic jews that people as individuals that believe in jesus as, a, as their messiah but as a nation they are in darkness as a nation but they will come back to the truth but they are who they are by the church of god you know, Jerusalem is the city of God by God's choice. It's not because Jerusalem is better than the London and the Paris and the New York of this world. No, it is God's choice. God chose to put his name upon that nation and God chose to put his name upon that city. And that is the choice of God. And God chose to call Paul and God chose to reveal himself to Paul in a peculiar way so that God can use him as an instrument of propagation of the truth of the gospel of God. It is by God's And God chose the church. God chose the church. Okay, People may not like the church, but God chose the church. God chose the church to be the light of this world and to be the salt of this world. And God chose that it is by the preaching of the scripture that people will be saved god shows that it is by the preaching okay people may say oh that that is that is that is you know the that is foolish <laughs> it is but god have chosen that it is by the foolishness of preaching that salvation will be brought to other people it's not by works because by our works we you know all our works are like fill the rag and by works Shall no man or woman be justified in the sight of God? Okay, this is the choice. God chose the father. God chose Abraham. God chose Moses. God chose Mary. It's not because Mary has any innate, you know, ability or beauty in herself to have been chosen of God. There are many virgins that God could have chosen, but God chose her. I know the Roman Catholic want to make her, you know, peculiar. Yes, she is peculiar because she was the vessel that God used, but she's not peculiar because she has an innate quality or ability in herself that qualifies her. No, 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 no. It is by the choice of God. And God has chosen the church to be his instrument in this day of propagating his power and his glory. He wants to flow through it. It is by the church of God. So we cannot glorify ourselves but also we cannot look down upon ourselves because it's not of him that run it it's of god that shows mercy it's not by our power or by our mind but by his spirit it is by the choice of god let's read that in john chapter 15 
John chapter 15, and we are going to read verse 16, and also we are going to read the book of Ephesians. John chapter 15, verse 16. The Lord Jesus is written, is, is speaking here. The Lord Jesus is speaking here to his disciple. He said, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name. He may give it to you. Now, let me make a comment here that I'm hoping to make later. That when God chose you, God called you. God ordained you for a purpose, for relationship and for assignment. God called us for a purpose. God did not call us just for picnic. Just is, is, did not call us just for fun. God called us for a purpose, to fulfill his purpose, not our purpose, to do his will, not our will. And this is really, really very important. So, so the Lord Jesus was telling his disciples, and also this applied to us. He said, you have not chosen me. I have chosen you. Remember, we are establishing that the God that is revealed to us on the pages of the Bible is a God that makes choices. Because we are talking here about the future, the fifth one, which is talking about our free will capacity to be able to make rational choices. Now, let's go back to our reading and let's read Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, according as he has chosen us when we are in Christ, when before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. I mean, we are not talking about election or choice in full but i want you to see that god chose us even before the foundation of the world god chose us in christ even before the foundation of the world that we should be holy there is an end purpose to our choice there's a responsibility there's an expectation but also there's a power that attend to that choice you were chosen in christ and in christ by the spirit and by the power of the word of god we are chosen so that we can be holy and without blame before him in love he chose us in his love not because of who we are in ourselves not because of what we are in ourselves but because of his love and in that choice is his power you see power attend to the place of choice god will give us the power to fulfill that for which he has chosen us for which he has called us for which he has ordained us he said according as he has chosen us in christ jesus before the foundation of the world that is the will of god that is the purpose of god that we should be holy and without blame, when God chose us to be holy, is because in his choice, his choice actually is also a place of power. A place of choice for God is a place of power. When God chooses us, he has also given us the ability and the capability capacity and the power to be able to work and to experience that for which he has called us that we should be holy and without blame before him in love we are still reading let's read first peter chapter 2 first peter chapter 2 verse 9 but you are a chosen generation so as a people as a church we are chosen you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people that you should show forth you see there is an end purpose there is an outcome there's a reason for our choice to show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light he didn't call us to just gyrate he didn't call us to just be careless or to just to just be unruly no he called us so that we can show forth his praises he said we are a chosen we are chosen <laughs> hallelujah i am chosen you are chosen we are chosen in love and in choosing us he equips us he empowers us we are royal priesthood we are excuse me holy nation we are peculiar because we are chosen we are royal because we are chosen we are holy because we are chosen we are peculiar and that with purpose to show for the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. The God that makes decision created humanity in his image with the same with free will capacity so that we also can be a creature of choice so that we can also be able to make rational 
choices. Man was created as a volitional creature, as a free moral agent, and also we have the capacity to choose our own destiny. God created us with free will. God did not create us as robots. God did not create us, you know, to 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 be creature of instinct. No, God created us with free will. Remember reasoning? And because he gave us the capacity to reason, he has also given us free will capacity to be able to make rational choices. We are volitional creature. We are free moral agent. We are capable of choosing our own destiny. God does not force his will on humanity. God does not force his choice on us. I mean, the greatness of the love of God, the greatness of the mercy of God, the greatness of the love of God. But God will not choose, will not force that upon us. We can choose to accept or we can choose to reject him. We can choose to love him. We can choose to ignore him. We can choose to worship him. We can choose to rebel against him. We can choose to receive, accept his offer of salvation, his offer of love, or we can choose to reject it. But we must understand that we will be responsible for the choices that we make. And this is very important. But the point here is that humanity is created as free moral agents. We are created as volitional creatures. God has given us the capacity to be able to make rational, volitional decisions as free moral agent. Let's read Joshua chapter 24 verses 14 and 15. This was Joshua, you know, recounting the things that God has done. This was after they have taken over the land and he was recounting the goodness of God and he was charging the people. We just want to read verse 14 and 15. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve you the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, you choose, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the God which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorite in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that's the choice you have to choose. Your wife cannot choose for you. Your husband cannot choose for you. Your parent cannot choose for you. Ultimately, it is I and you are going to give account to God. We are, we are going to be accountable to God. And Joshua was challenging the people here. He said, you choose. You choose. You choose this day whom you serve. Every single one of us will have to make a choice. Are we going to make a choice to live a lie? Or are we going to make a choice to live the truth? Now, living the truth can be costly. But you and I will have to make a choice whether we want to compromise or whether we want to live the truth. You and I will have to make a choice whether we want to live a lie or whether we want to seek to know the truth and to live for the truth. Joshua said, I cannot force you. You will have to make your choice. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Let's look at first Samuel. We are going to just pick and choose some verses here. This was when the children of Israel, then years down the line after we've read Joshua, this was when they asked for the king. They came to Samuel who was, you know, essentially the last of the judge but also God's prophets. They came to Samuel and they asked for a king. First Samuel chapter 8, let's read verses 6 and 7 and 9 and 18. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Akin unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. Verse 9. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, how be it yet protest solemnly unto them and show to them, show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. Verse 18. And you shall cry out in that day because of your king, which you shall have chosen you. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. Essentially what I'm bringing out here, and this is very, very important, is the fact that we will, we will be responsible for our choices. Okay, we read that Joshua where he said, you choose. You choose this day whom you want to serve. But as for me and my house, will serve the Lord. And in this first Samuel chapter 8, the people chose to reject God. And they chose to have a king. And in choosing to have a king, they are rejecting God. Listen to me. If you choose not to do something, you are choosing 
something. Okay, no, there is no, there is no, in, in, there is no in between. There is no neutral here. Okay, not making a choice is making a choice. Not making a choice is making a choice. Or making a choice, we have to be careful that we make the right choices. These people decided that they are going to choose a king. And in choosing a king, they rejected God. But God and Samuel let them know that their choice is not without consequences. And say, look, the, the king that you are choosing, okay, in that day your king will will do so much and he, he listed what the king will do. He will take your daughters, he will tax you. They said, still give us a king. And he said, in that day you will cry out because of the choices that you have made. We are crying out now because of the choices that people have made on our behalf. Choices that people have made, choices that nations have made, choices that our ancestors have made. But we have to be careful that we make the right choices. You know, when you read Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 to 9, it said, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man swear, that shall he also reap. I think I'm going to stop here because I want to come back to this that our choices is not without repercussion. We can make good choices. He said, Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sweat, he shall reap. He that sweat unto the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, and he that sweat to the spirit shall of the spirit life it everlasting. Let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we wait faith not. Our choices, yes, God has given us the capacity, God has given us the free will to make choices, but that choices will have a repercussion. We will reap that which we sow. There's still a little bit more I want to say about this before we move on to number six, but I want to stop here and I want to ask you to please make the right choice. Make choice for life. Make choice for life so that you will not be destroyed. Okay? For God so loved the world that he gave his only because his son. There's no other name. Choose Jesus. Come to him today and admit that you are a sinner. Invite him into your life as your savior. He will. He will take the heart of Satan, the heart of stone out of you and give you a new heart. And he will walk with you for the rest of your life. And then when this is all over, you will spend eternity with him in the new heaven and the new heart. Do it right now, today.